Hi right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking an over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of everything. Here on this glorious last day of summer 2023, we have made it to the end of the summer of 2023. Just one last glorious, cool summer day here at Bugs in Your Dog Farm here on this glorious... It is Friday, September 22nd, 2023. I guess the first day of fall uh, is September 23rd for some reason this year. So anyway, today I am celebrating 64 turns of the cosmic screw on the planet. I am, uh, now that I am 64, I am proud to say I do not have any grandchildren on my knee, but I do have my little, uh, yes, my little dog. Sancho Panza, so he presented me with my birthday present this morning. I did not realize that bot flies lived in upstate New York. We pulled this nasty, disgusting bot fly maggot out of Sancho's stomach today. Good Lord. And uh, so here's my little dog celebrating life at bugs in your dog farm uh, it never ends but anyway before i get out there and start celebrating my exciting birthday party uh since it is friday uh do what i try to do every friday and that is bringing you my ecological meltdown roundup rant so my first ecological meltdown roundup rant of my 65th year begins uh as we check in with rhett butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com uh, to uh see how this planet has been collapsing due to a death by a million cuts while all of the uh, Save the Planet UN doomers are hard at work in New York, baby. And the climate marchers and all that. I am so happy to see that Rhett Butler nowhere mentioned climate marching anywhere in this week's roundup. Uh, so we are going... To dive right in now he starts out i've already done a rant this week so i don't need to cover it talking about this unadulterated greenwashing horseshit called carbon credits we have already gone over this uh revealed why why the un is not climate neutral due to all of those bullshit carbon credits. Anyway, I'm glad to see Red is finally getting a little bit honest about that greenwashing bullshit. So anyway, since we don't need to repeat that, I am thrilled to say we can start off our, our roundup this week with a question. I absolutely love it when we have a question. Uh... Can road ecology save millions of animals? Can road ecology save millions of animals? The answer to the question, can road ecology save millions of animals, is no, it cannot. Or for every animal that it saves, some other new road will take out two uh, animals. So what this is talking about is these various wildlife crossings, these overpasses and underpasses, you know, what they're building to help animals cross highways without getting run over by your new planet-saving electric vehicle. 
You know, if you haven't realized, electric vehicles can run over your fellow Earthlings as well as a gas-sucking vehicle. I, uh, whenever I read one of these stories, I, I am reminded of what happened down there in Costa Rica. You know, you know Costa Rica, that poster child of uh, Save the Planet sustainability. So what they did down there was they built one of these wildlife crossings down there in a highway in southwest Costa Rica where my buddy was living. So what happened was all of the animals, you know, along this long stretch of road were kind of funneled in to one of these road ecology projects. So all of the Costa Rican versions of rednecks just waited on the other side, just sat there at the bottleneck with their various traps and guns and everything else. And so instead of getting run over uh, by some gas sucking or electric vehicle, all of our fellow earthlings that got funneled through the underpass promptly got got trapped or shot instead. These things are, are a major gift to poachers and clueless morons. So the answer is no, they cannot. Uh, okay. And we have, you know, whenever I see the word sustainable in a headline anymore, I just move on. All right. Uh, I have a lot on my plate today, guys, so I'm going to be skipping over so much of this. Uh, there, there's a, a lot of bullshit here. What is going on with this major planet-eating Amazon deforester JBS meat packing? Yes, meat packing giant and Amazon deforester JBS is bid for New York uh, for the stock exchange listing has been challenged. Uh, I, I don't know why everyone else on the New York Stock Exchange is a goddamn planet eater. Why not these guys? Uh, JBS, the number one beef producer in Brazil and among the top three meat processors in the U.S., has been implicated in multiple land clearing investigations in the Amazon and other Brazilian biomes. Do you think so? Uh, according to the, some new audit, uh, JBS had the lowest environmental compliance rate among large meat packers. Uh, their total deforestation footprint may be as high as 4.2 million acres otherwise known as 1.7 million hectares. Uh, environmentalists say a surge in new JBS investments via the New York Stock Exchange could convert far more Brazilian rainforest to ranches leading to climate disaster. Uh, You know, this is too uh, technical to get into. Just this latest thing about this European Union deforestation-free rule highly challenging for Southeast Asia's small holders. I love that word, small holders, is another word for planet nibblers. So uh, the planet nibblers are getting uh, caught up in uh, this new uh, greenwashing 
from the European Union. You know, the big guys can get around it. Oh, boy. Trying to break. Okay. <clears throat> Group certification helps Malaysia's Sabah aim <coughs> for palm oil sustainability. Yes, in 2015, the government of Sabah in Malaysian Borneo committed to gaining sustainability certification for 100% of the state's palm oil by 2025. Yes, but as the deadline nears, getting small holders certified has proven to be a major challenge out of an estimated 30,000 you know planet nibblers in the state just 885 have been certified as sustainable uh, other obstacles in the state statewide certification process include debate over whether any deforestation should be allowed for, you know, sustainable palm oil and the continued issuance of licenses to clear more forest in the state. One more time, guys. There is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. I don't care how much uh, the, these uh, palm oil corporations try to, uh, you know, fudge the books by acting like that they're a bunch of little planet nibblers instead of just a few planet eaters. Uh, you know, uh, Rhett Butler knows goddamn well uh, that this article is complete total bullshit. And if one tree is cut down for palm oil by some little planet nibbler, it's not sustainable. Please, cut the shit. All right. Speaking of... Uh, uh, of uh, well, I don't know if this is this is not exactly greenwashing. This is just you know one of these hopium bullshits. Uh, talking, I've mentioned this, you know how all of these noble savages down there in the Amazon. I guess they showed up at Climate Week, demanding that demanding that the planet eaters protect 80% of the Amazon rainforest by the year 2025, when more than 80% of the Amazon rainforest is already gone in 2023. I mean, more than 20% is already gone. So what they're calling for makes no sense, ain't gonna happen because it can't happen. And there will be a hell of a lot less Amazon rainforest in two years from now than there is now. But the whole goddamn Amazon has already hit a tipping point. And by, you know, by 2050, probably be a goddamn desert anyway. Uh, and I guess the president of Colombia, at least in climate week, was being a little bit honest about where the Amazon rainforest is going. There we go. Thank you, uh, Rhett Butler, for being a mouthpiece for the greenwashers uh, in the apparel industry. Bangladesh. Bangladesh apparel industry makes progress in eco-friendly manufacturing. This is according, anyway, I'm not, I'm not even going to insult 
my intelligence, Sancho Panza's intelligence, or your intelligence by parroting this unadulterated horseshit that Rhett Butler is spewing out of his website. Rhett Butler knows as well as I do there is not a goddamn thing eco-friendly about the Bangladesh apparel industry. Never has been, is not now, never will be. Unadulterated, greenwashing horse shit. Come on, Rhett. All right, finally, we have the word sustainable sort of used correctly in a sentence. Totally unsustainable sand mining harms marine environments, new data suggests. New data from the newly launched platform Marine Sand Watch suggests that the dredging industry is extracting about six billion, with a B, six billion tons of sand from the marine environment annually. Experts say the extraction of sand can have numerous impacts on the marine environment, such as harming biodiversity, polluting water, and making coastlines more vulnerable to sea level rise. While the sand mining industry is currently operating at unsustainable levels, experts, this word experts is getting on my nerves, experts say there are solutions. There are solutions to mitigate, to mitigate the damage of extracting six billion tons of sand from the ocean floor every year. There are solutions being, of course, keeping your pecker in your pants. Uh, once again, uh, Rhett Butler knows as well as I do and Sancho Panza does, there is no goddamn way to mitigate the damage from, from dredging six billion fucking tons of sand from the bottom of the ocean. I, 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 I am sick and tired of this shit where, uh, where uh, you, you know, even in, in Manga Bay, where you, you get a little, bit of the, a little bit of the goddamn truth what's going on on this effing planet and then turning around at the end of this, saying there are solutions. Get your goddamn sand dredgers out of the ocean, okay? As long as there is one sand dredger uh, in, in the ocean, uh, that the planet is doomed, and this isn't even talking about deep sea mining, do not confuse this with deep sea mining. This is shallow sea mining. You know, the, this, this sand, the, the vast majority going into cement. It's to build cement and glass is it, where this damn sand, these six billion tons of uh, sand solution. Yeah, having humans go extinct is the solution. This so kind kind of uh, uh, <laughs> tying in with sustainable development goal number fourteen. Okay, sustainable development goal number fourteen, which is protecting the oceans. You know, by finding solutions for dredging up six billion tons of sand out of it every year. Yes. Though, sustainable development goal number 14 is underfunded, leaders of the global community can take action 
during the 2023 Sustainable Development Goal Summit taking place in New York City. Yes. Uh, so you can kiss goodbye Sustainable Development Goal number 14. All right. I love this. Uh, the Panama Canal, you know, one of the major reasons the planet is doomed is getting in a big fight with some giant mining deal in Panama, some big ass copper mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love claiming that the giant copper mine threatens the Panama Canal and global trade. All right, bring on the giant copper mine. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, more of this bullshit from Climate Week. Uh... So here is this, this, this article about the myth of protected areas. Uh, you, you know, talking about how protected areas, uh, the, the absolute uh, joke, the uh, oxymoron of protected areas, how much they, uh, how much they protect the planet. Uh, I love this. Conservationists say that while expanding protected area coverage is part of the solution, huh. serious investment in management and resources for existing protected areas is a matter of urgency to ensure that they are not simply, quote, paper parks. And of course, what 90% of protected areas are on this planet are paper parks. Uh, I've explained the concept, you know, it's where a bunch of these, uh, you know, these government bureaucrats directly, uh, you know, being held by these short and curlies by the global industrial uh, economy, you know, they take a map and they draw a green line uh, on the map. Some big, you know, just some just random green line out in the middle of nowhere and call it a protected area. And then all these clueless morons can look at the map and say, look at that. Look at that big green area on that piece of paper. All right, we're saving the planet by drawing lines around green dots on pieces of paper. So how is El Nino playing out in Indonesia? El Nino tends, El Nino leads to more fires and toxic air pollution in Indonesia. Indonesia saw an increase in land and forest fires recently as the El Nino weather phenomenon brings a prolonged dry season. Data show a four-fold increase in hot spots through September compared with the same period last year. Uh, Carbon-rich peatlands are also burning with more than 14,000 hot spots, otherwise known as peat fires, detected in peat landscapes in August alone. All right, so who is winning in the dead environmental defender contest so far this year. That would be Latin America is 
so far the most dangerous place for <clears throat> environmental defenders. Uh, at least 177 environmental defenders were killed last year globally. At least 155 of them were in Latin America, according to Global Witness. If, if there's anybody on this planet who believes that a grand total of 22 people were gunned down or run over or poisoned or burned down in this entire planet outside of Latin America. I, I, you know, you're, you're, you're so clueless for, for global witness to sit here and try to insult my intelligence by telling me, uh, adding up the continent of Africa, the continent of Asia, and, you know, not to mention uh, the rest of them. There was probably environmental defenders gunned down in Antarctica. 22 people on this planet outside of Latin America gunned down by the planet eaters and their henchmen last year. Unadulterated, total horseshit. Do you get it? <sighs> okay, we have Kellogg, Kellogg's breakfast cereal, saving the planet. <sighs> okay, but we're going to end up down there where I was last year, but will not be returning to this year. I was thinking about returning back to the Yucatan Peninsula this year, but it looks like I'm going to Donellan, Florida instead, so I will have to uh, leave it to Manga Bay to uh, say what is going on with that completely indefensible planet-eating bullshit Maya tourist train uh, destroying the rainforest of the Yucatan Peninsula, finishing off what that asteroid started 65 million years ago. Mexico groups say Maya train construction has caused significant deforestation. <clears throat> An analysis of satellite imagery shows that 26,764 acres, otherwise known as about 11,000 hectares, are currently being destroyed for the Maya train project, with 61% of that deforested so far. Uh, the survey also reveals that an 87% of the deforested lands clearing or logging was carried out without a change of land use approval as required by environmental legislation. Uh, Anyway, they just will not leave it alone. Uh, they're, they're just absolutely determined to uh, turn the Yucatan Peninsula into just one more wasteland. It's just like every spot on this planet. Oh, uh, but anyway, I got to wrap up this week's ecological meltdown roundup ran and uh what do i need to do i think we need to go to the syracuse airport to uh pick up a friend coming in for my big birthday party tomorrow probably will not be a uh a chronicle of the collapse tomorrow we're going to be out partying 
while we still can on the first day of the fall of 23. The fall of 23 begins tomorrow. Are you ready for the fall of 2023, Sancho Banjo? He said, Pop, I'm ready for the fall of this thing here. You want to see something really gross, so this is where we this is where we pulled the the bot fly. We pulled the bot fly maggot out of my little dog. Here it bugs in your dog farm. Bye guys. We're going to go uh Enjoy some music tomorrow night while we still have music on a living planet. Bye, guys.